Welcome to Trial Site News Weekly Roundup. Today, we'll be talking about University of Louisville's Brown Cancer Center, which embraces immuno-oncology developed at NCI. And some patients are seeing dramatic results. Then, COVID-19 long haulers only number more as millions of cases sweep through America. More focused research is needed. And finally, we'll talk about what is the Zelenko protocol and is it relevant to helping prevent COVID-19 hospitalization? All of this starts now. A 46-year-old man residing in Louisville, Kentucky area was given about six months to live, according to a physician's grim forecast. With stage four lung cancer, Tony Burton's options for life narrowed, but he sought out a second opinion with Dr. Jason Chesney at the University of Louisville's Health's James Graham Brown Cancer Center. Thanks to the clinical research as a care movement, a potential advanced but investigational therapy was identified as a potential treatment course for Mr. Burton. The treatment is called tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, where some of the patient's tumor is surgically removed while cell-based therapy is used in the lab to reprogram the patient's existing cells, which are later reinfused and unleashed back into the patient to destroy the tumor cells. Now, as it turns out, the physician Burton consulted Dr. Chesney also happened to be the principal investigator for this advanced, not yet approved FDA approach. To date, this procedure has eliminated six of Mr. Burton's seven tumors. Declaring to Local 12 WKRC Media, Mr. Burton stated that, as of today, I only have one tumor left. I'm hoping at my next scan that it'll be gone. Now, this treatment has given the patient a second chance to look at extending life. The treatment fits into a powerful class called immuno-oncology. The specific investigational approach is sponsored by Lovins Biotherapeutics. Now, when interviewed, the Kentucky-based physician and principal investigator suggested that it was a game changer, such as cell-based therapies that could save even another 25% of patients. He said that I have 10 to 20 patients who have been told to go home and die, and now they're living normal lifespans without having to receive any treatments. The trial site news suggests that the audience here consider this carefully. A great advancement has already been made, and it is still in the early inning of a long game. The potential, of course, is huge. Cancer patients need to be aware of these studies and the potential for an extension on life. Now, the Cancer Research as a Care Option movement, supported extensively by the NCI, seeks to bring life-saving advanced treatments to parts of the country that heretofore patients would have had to travel long and far to access. Often considered underrepresented, these patients can be far from major urban centers such as New York, Boston, Los Angeles, or Houston. The goal is to bring the cutting-edge cancer treatments to top academic medical centers in regions around the nation to ensure patients far from traditional primary academic medical center hubs and have the opportunity to access the same studies. So let's talk a little bit more about the experimental treatment. As I mentioned earlier, it's called tumor infiltrating lymphocytes. This experimental treatment represents the use of a type of white blood cell that has been reprogrammed outside of and reinfused into the human body. Upon entry, they stimulate the immune system to kill the cancerous tumor. Dr. Chesney likens the treatment as a mini version of bone marrow transplant. Described as difficult and painful, nonetheless, early progress shows significant patient benefit while early studies already evidenced induced durable remissions. And so a total of eight studies are listed that have involved the intervention of LN145. Now for our next story, an athletic, active blogger and 35-year-old mom had no health issues until she was tested positive for COVID-19. Then her world changed. With continuous symptoms that degrade overall quality of life, Caitlin is part of a group of COVID-19 survivors known as long haulers. With no signs of relief, this group grows increasingly frustrated with the lack of understanding, despite intense research efforts to produce a vaccine and advanced monoclonal antibodies. So what about the millions of people that have been infected with the disease that face the chance of becoming a long hauler? What do they do? Is the research investigating answers? Well, recently, NBC Connecticut Investigates team, led by Dan Krikorin, looked into this growing problem 
centering the look on Caitlin Houston. Now, she still faces a range of debilitating symptoms despite the fact that the actual coronavirus infection is long gone. From bouts of dizziness to loss of taste and persistent shortness of breath and fatigue, the long hauler faces a range of problems that generate growing concern. Now, we here at Trial Site News looked into some basic information associated with the long hauler challenge, also referred to as long COVID. About 10 to 20 percent of individuals who have been diagnosed with COVID-19 report experiencing some form of longer-term symptoms that range a month after the illness has passed. According to a recent Harvard report based on published studies and surveys, anywhere from 50% upwards of 80% of COVID-19 patients continue to experience troubling symptoms up to three months post the onset of COVID-19 infection. Now, in one study known as Gamelli Against COVID-19 Post-Acute Care Study Group, a team out of the Gamelli University Hospital in Rome, Italy, shared a case series where a large proportion of patients with COVID-19 presented the symptoms after their virus cleared. In fact, the Italian physicians found that of those patients who had recovered from their SARS-CoV-2 infection, 87.4% reported persistence of at least one symptom with a particular notable continuance of fatigue and dyspnea. Now, of course, this study, a case series, could be critiqued for various shortcomings, but nonetheless, the findings are troubling. Now, gaining prominence from a The Atlantic piece, thousands of people that once had COVID-19 still battle with persistent symptoms. Often, women are afflicted, and they are active in engaging with the medical community. They want answers, and this will take the form of investment in more research to better understand this new illness. Now, even here in the United States, recently the NIH shared an anonymous editorial titled Citizen Scientists Take on the Challenge of Long Haul COVID-19, highlighting the frustration of patients and the need to create patient-led research groups such as the patient-led research. Now, the UK's National Institute for Health Research Center for Engagement and Dissemination recently published its first dynamic themed review following not only published scientific evidences but other real world data points associated with this topic. And we here at Trial Site News have opened up an investigational channel for this persistent problem. We will monitor for any breakthroughs or new research centering on long haulers. And you can sign up for the daily newsletter for updates on this story and more. A growing divide is observed between most of the regulatory and research establishment that now shuns hydroxychloroquine, the once-embraced investigational therapy for COVID-19 now evidenced by a majority of studies to not be effective. However, critics, and there are many physicians in the field, argue that most of these studies are designed in a flawed manner. And so with that being said, an outspoken physician, Dr. Vladimir Zelenko, and a German team declared in a press release that they completed a retrospective study analyzing his patient data and that the findings have been accepted for publication after a rigorous peer review process. The paper can be found in the International Journal of Antimicrobial Agents. So what is the key hypothesis? Well, Dr. Zelenko's main hypothesis is based on the data showing that early intervention and treatment of high-risk patients with COVID-19 results in significantly fewer hospitalizations and death. This treatment regimen involves zinc, low-dose hydroxychloroquine, and azithromycin, and is also apparently known as the Zelenko Protocol. So why is this retrospective study unique? Well, according to the independent physician sponsor, only high-risk outpatients were treated with a triple drug regimen. And according to Dr. Zelenko, high-risk patients represented those individuals that have a 5 to 10 percent chance of dying from COVID-19. Now, this category includes patients that are over 60 as well as those under 60 that have had other medical issues or experienced breathing problems. In this protocol, all high-risk outpatients were treated at their initial visit, most within the first five days of the onset of symptoms. All patients were laboratory confirmed with COVID-19 infection. So who then is Dr. Zelenko? Well, he's a family practitioner and a major proponent of the use of hydroxychloroquine, zinc, and azithromycin to treat COVID-19. He has claimed to treat anywhere from 300 to 1,450 COVID-19 patients. Now, alternatively, according to the Physicians Weekly of the Skeptical Scalpel Awards, the publication was leery of the independent doctor's claims, stating that those are impressive numbers, but no one else has seen the data. The author of this critique noted that a fact check at the website Snopes couldn't verify his claims. 
With all that being said, let's talk about what the published study reveals. Well, it's certainly not 300 plus patients. However, the doctor did treat 141 high-risk patients and reports that the risk stratification-based treatment of COVID-19 outpatients as early as practicable upon symptom onset. And the triple therapy, i.e. the Zelenko protocol, was associated with significantly fewer hospitalizations. The overwhelming majority of the research, regulatory, and academic establishments have moved on from hydroxychloroquine. In fact, Trial Site News has reported on difficulties in filling COVID-19 prescriptions for this drug in many states. Moreover, the emphasis during the pandemic has been on randomized controlled trials, or RCTs, the gold standard of producing medical evidence. However, reports have shown that many treatment strategies which are deemed evidence-based were not ever subject to randomized controlled trials. And as part of this, many doctors would consider it unethical as well to withhold a treatment that is deemed to help patients, particularly in a time of crisis. Unfortunately for the hydroxychloroquine camp, it appears to be an uphill battle as the societal forces are now circling the wagon on these economical, available therapies considered important for early treatment to reduce hospitalization. And the same could be said, by the way, for the controversial ivermectin, which we here at Trial Site News have extensively chronicled. Now, Trial Site News is pro-doctor and healthcare provider platform. These are our heroes in our eyes. Their voices should be heard and respected. But on the other hand, Trial Site News is a neutral space, and several studies using hydroxychloroquine against COVID-19 haven't produced sufficient evidence. Now, countering these, though, several doctors have voiced seemingly rational critiques of at least some of the study designs. Of concern, Trial Site News does detect some politics associated with the subject of economical and available repurposable drugs associated with the virus. And that, my friends, brings this episode to a close. As always, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you being with us here, and I can't wait to see you all next time.